The SN74HC595N. It's a serial in parallel out shift register, and it's particularly neat because it allows you to manipulate the contents of the actual shifting. You can do the shifting, in other words, but it's not going to change the outputs until you specifically tell it. So it's actually got two different clock signals. Also, it has tri-state outputs, so you could connect it to a bus or for anything else where you want tri-state outputs. It's actually, in a sense, two registers in one. It has a shift register and then a regular register. They call it a storage register in the datasheet. So you have your bits and you shift them through the shift register. And this is an 8-bit register and it's just any other shift register. But the actual outputs, the actual outputs of the whole chip are not changing. And then when you tell it to, when you flag the clock, when you pulse the clock, it moves the entire contents of this shift register simultaneously into the actual storage register, data register, whatever, output register. So the outputs all change at once. So this is great so that as you're shifting data in, out, or around, your outputs are not flipping randomly as the data fly by. It's got the eight outputs QA through QH, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. These are tri-state outputs. So you've got the output enable, active low. So if output enable is low, these outputs are high or low. If output enable is high, then these outputs are high impedance, disconnected. These outputs are updated by the R clock pin, active high, so rising edge. Every time you pulse R clock, these outputs will be set to the contents of the shift register, whatever they happen to be. If you don't pulse R clock, these outputs will never change. The output enable is asynchronous, so it can be off or on at any time. It doesn't have anything to do with the clock. There is a QH prime or whatever. It's an apostrophe in the data sheet. This is the same as the QH, except it's the internal QH. This QH is the regular output that requires the R clock to update. This is the internal one. It's what QH will become if you pulse the clock. The idea for this is you use it if you have the shift register circular. You could hook this back into the first bit or whatever and circulate the data, or it's for chaining. So if you have, you know, 16 bits, if you have two of these chips, then you connect this one to the input of the next one, and you can shift all 16 bits and then update both chips at once so all 16 outputs change simultaneously. So if you are not doing this circularly or you're not chaining the chips, you just can ignore that, but that's the internal QH. And then for the actual shift register part, the part that you set and then update into these outputs, you've got SER, this is just the serial input. This is whatever value you're going to shift in. It's not bidirectional, it's only shift in. There's no left or right shift direction. Then you've got SR clock. You pulse the clock and it shifts in. So whatever value is on SER, when you do SR clock, that'll become A. And then H will just drop off the end, unless you have it connected circularly. And finally, there is a clear. SR clear, active low this time, and this is an asynchronous clear of the shifting, right? This is the, this is the shifting. Well, this is the shift register part. The serial input, the serial clock. Why did I write H? Okay, don't worry about it. So the serial data input, the serial clock to shift in the serial data input, the serial clear, active low, to clear it, as if you had just shifted in eight lows, but it's asynchronous, it'll clear at any time. And then the bit that would be shifted out. And then the, the output and the output clock, and these are the synchronous data part. So two registers in one, pretty cool. So you can connect it to a bus or anything like that by using the output enable, or you can just ignore that pin. You can use it like a regular shift register, serial in, parallel out, although the outputs don't update unless you have a clock signal. You can't like tie the clock and have it just be transparent. But if you're using a clock, then you could just tie the clock in and have it update every, you know, you know pulse instead of whatever. But its primary use is for when you want to be able to update the shift register, but not display the outputs until you're ready. Fairly simple, fairly cool, and fairly useful. So how about a demonstration? So here we have our chip all connected up. The QA through QH are the normal outputs. This is the internal output that mirrors QH, except it's the one 
you know, pre-update. It's whatever the shift register is rather than the data register. The serial input, the serial clock that does the shifting, the active low serial clear asynchronous, the active low output enable asynchronous, and the R clock that updates the outputs. So the first thing you'll notice, well, DIP means it's digital input with a pull-up resistor. And because I have pull-up resistors, when I put this to high impedance, you'll see that the output enable controls QA through QH, but not the QH apostrophe. That's the internal one. So output enable just controls those eight. And the QH apostrophe is used for chaining, so it still functions even when the output is not being updated. So if I set the serial data to high, nothing happens. If I pulse the R clock, nothing happens because I haven't shifted. So if I pulse the serial clock, I have now shifted in a high, but you don't see anything. But if I pulse R clock, you'll see there's the high. And then if I do a low and I pulse the serial clock, then pulse the data clock, you'll see I've done that. So if I shift in one, two, three more lows, update it again, see it moves over three. And if I keep pulsing it, but I don't update the output, one, two, three, and now you see QH went high because internally that high was shifted over to QH, but it's not on the output yet. The output is still holding the old value. So if I pulse it to update, you can see it's on QH, shift it again. Now the register is completely clear, but it hasn't shown yet until I update the R clock. So let me go ahead and shift in three highs and I can update and we see there's the three highs and then serial clear and that has cleared it. But of course the data hasn't updated until I do that. Let me shift in again. Let me shift in eight highs until we see QH go high on the eighth one. So update, there's the eight highs. And if I set clear, it's asynchronous. It immediately clears internally. And then I can update. And then if serial clear is low, I can shift all I want and it is not going to actually put any highs in there. So the output enable controls the tri-state of the outputs. Serial clear clears the internal serial register. Serial clock shifts serial into the internal serial register. And then our clock will make the internal serial register update the output register. It might feel like there's a lot of moving parts, but if you conceptualize it as two registers in one, it's really easy. You've got a shift register and then you've got a data register as a buffer. It's essentially a buffer, but there you go. So that's all there is to it. So I will be seeing you.